In this tutorial, we're going to be looking at secondary colour correction. Primary colour correction takes place when you want to adjust the colours over an entire digital image. Secondary colour correction is where you want to select one colour in the image and adjust that only. In this tutorial, I'm going to use this pink colour on this flower and adjust that whilst leaving all the other colours untouched. Now, to get set up, you really ought to be in colour as an editing mode, because when you are, you'll see the Lumetri colours down on the right hand side, because we're going to be using HSL secondary correction. So to get started, make sure you've got your clip selected in the timeline, open HSL secondary, and we've got our tools listed below. We're going to start by going to set colour, clicking on the eyedrop, and selecting the pink as our main colour choice. We'll select it once. As you can see, that's now the set colour. Go down to here and click on this, which is the mask tool. This now shows us how much of the colour has been selected. You've got three options to how you want to view it. Colour grey, colour black and white black. I personally prefer white black. It gives me a better sense of exactly what I've actually selected on the flower head. Not a lot, as you can see. There's some portions missing here, here and here. So we're going to add colour to add more colour. Click on the eyedropper and we're going to select again. That's looking better. Still a bit of grey here though. Select again. Let's click on that sort of butt there. Not bad. Let's do a little bit more. And I'll do one final attempt. Just a bit in there. That's looking better. But there's still a bit of work to do. So if you want to make additional adjustments, you'll go down here to your hue, saturation and luma. The hue will extend the range of reds that are selected. So if I keep pulling it out, eventually you can see it sliding into green and we're starting to select the rest of the image, which we don't want to do. So I'm going to slide that back to actually about, again, if we go too far, you end up reducing it, but I'll put it back to what it was, which was about there. Truth is, you tend to find you don't need to adjust hue that much because if you've made set color and add color and corrections up here, usually you've set the hue that you want. Now down here you've got saturation, which is how much we saturate that pink colour. If you slide it over here, you'll actually start to undo your work, because you're actually starting to go into the grey area, as you can see. So the chances are you want to leave it really back over here. There we go. Again, if I pull it too much, you can see the damage I do. So I'm going to put it back more or less to where it was. And you can see it's looking healthy again. Probably the best one to adjust, though, is the luma, which is the brightness of the pink colour. So I'm going to slide that out a bit more. Let's put it over there, maybe slide it right out. And it's actually, again, if you do too much, it's going to start hitting reds and pinks in other parts of the image. So I'm going to push that back maybe a bit. We don't really want to get into the black areas. And that's probably about as far as we're going to get with it. If you want to double check, you can add a bit more colour. So you can always go back here and maybe try selecting a bit more. But pretty much, I think I'm happy with that. When you've finished your selection, turn the mask off, like so. Oh, now by the way, here, and this was because I was doing this on a previous tutorial, I've left that selected. So at the moment, yours ought to be looking like that. It should be grey. I think I had it on a previous tutorial where I'd inverted it, but I'll come back to that in a minute. So deselect the mask, like so. Now if you want to denoise the image by taking out some of the grain and some of the textures, you can if there's a lot of movement. I might do that in, in this one because the flower does blow around a lot in the wind, but for the moment I'm going to leave it. But if you want to denoise the image, sharpen it up a bit, take out some of the grain, this is the button for you. If you want to blur it slightly to actually soften the edges of the mask and the selection, you can use this tool, but I'm going to leave that as well. So down here is my colour wheel, and I can use this now to change the colour of this flower because as we can see, it's only going to change these colours selected here. So I'm going to go to my colour wheel and I'm going to slide it up into the reds a bit more. And as you can see, that image is getting a bit more vibrant. I may have damaged it a bit here, so I might actually slide it down maybe just over to there a little bit. You can make further adjustments here as well to the temperature of the image, the tint and the contrast. You can sharpen the edges of it slightly as well, but I don't want to do that too much. It can look a bit over stylized and it starts to stand out a little bit. Or you can saturate it by actually taking some of the colors out, which I'm not going to do just yet. 
Now you can actually use this effect to do some uh, interesting other effects as well. If you look on this one I sort of made earlier, on this I actually keyed out the pink but reversed the image. Now I'll kind of explain that um, a bit more clearly, I've not done that very well. So I did all my usual elements up here of selecting pinks, um, adding colours, I even removed a bit here and there. I did adjust my hue, saturation and luma. But on this occasion, I went down here and I saturated the colours all of the way out so that the flower went black and white. What I then did was I went up here and I clicked on that button which inverts the mask. So originally the flower was black and white and everything around here was colour. Because I inverted the mask, everything in the background went black and white but the flower remained colourful. And it's a nice little effect if you're doing um, maybe some promo work and you want to highlight a particular object. It's a lovely old technique. You make the object stand out by making everything else black and white. One final point. This saturation feature down here, which I really like, it actually allows you to do this effect, is missing for the most recent update, which is November 2016. So if you want to be able to use it, you'll have to uninstall the November 2016 version and go back to the previous version. Okay, folks, hope you found that useful. See you in the next tutorial.